It feels like in the tech world there's always something new to talk about, and if you're like me, then you've been keeping a close eye on any Gemini changes as of late. Thankfully, we did get a pretty big update as of February 5th, where Google added a handful of new, powerful models to support the Gemini 2.0 initiative. They come with some pretty notable changes, and lucky for you, I'm here to break it all down and cover everything you need to know. Getting right into it, there's a lot to talk about in terms of what's exactly new with this latest Gemini update. First off, there is a lot of changes happening with the Gemini models themselves as Google is introducing some new additions with some really interesting tweaks. For starters, a new model called Gemini 2.0 Pro Experimental is now available for developers and Gemini Advanced users to try out. If you remember back in December, Google already shared an experimental version of Gemini 2.0 Pro. This was a way for them to get feedback from developers, especially on areas where it excelled, like coding for example, and it seems like that feedback was super valuable because as of February 5th, they rolled out an updated version that receives some improvements based on that developer feedback. Google says this new iteration of Gemini 2.0 Pro is their best model yet in terms of coding performance and its ability to handle complex prompts. And Google says it has better understanding and reasoning of world knowledge than any model they've released so far. On top of that, Gemini 2.0 Pro Experimental has a massive 2 million token context window. To put that into perspective on how much data that is, Google says a 1 million token context window is like being able to process around 50,000 thousand lines of code, all the text messages you sent in the past five years, about eight full-length novels, or transcripts from over 2,000 podcast episodes. So with a 2 million token context window, you're looking at roughly double that processing power. Additionally, Gemini 2.0 Pro Experimental also has the ability to call tools like Google Search and execute code directly. In terms of availability, developers can get their hands on this via Google AI Studio and Vertex AI. Otherwise, if you're a Gemini Advanced user, you can access this model through the Gemini app or on the web. Next up is the introduction of another big Gemini model with the addition of Gemini 2.0 Flash Thinking Experimental. I know it's a mouthful, but this model is really fun because it's specifically designed to strengthen its reasoning abilities by breaking down complex prompts into a series of smaller, more manageable steps. And the part that I'm truly excited about is that you can actually see the thought process behind its reasoning. So as the prompt plays out, you can see what it's receiving from you, the internal goal for for the interaction, the tone that it thinks it should respond in, plus a lot more. It's pretty surreal actually, as it gives you a look behind the curtain to understand why Gemini responded the way it did. I actually did test this out quite a bit over the past few days, and man, for someone like me who always wants to know the why behind everything, it's a lot of information. I'd even say it's almost too much data to process in a fascinating way of sorts. And on top of that, Google gave us a second version of this Flash experimental model that can interact with apps like YouTube. YouTube, search, and Google Maps, so you can see how these new reasoning capabilities work in action with some really common Google services. If you want to test this out for yourself, it will be available in the Gemini app for free and for all web users via the model drop-down menu. But that's not everything, as another new model was introduced primarily for developers with Gemini 2.0 Flash Lite. The name kind of hints at it, but this is Google's most cost-efficient model yet, while still improving on the quality and speed of its output. Google is saying it actually has better quality than their previous 1.5 flash model and outperforms it on a majority of its benchmarks. Even with the focus on efficiency, it still packs a 1 million token context window and multimodal input. Google did touch on its efficiency briefly in their blog post with an example stating 2.0 flash light could generate relevant one-line captions for around 40,000 unique photos, costing less than a dollar in Google's AI Studio's paid tier. Sounds great if you're a developer that has a need like this and if you want to check it out for yourself, it's currently in public preview through Google AI Studio and Vertex AI. Beyond the new models themselves, there were a few interesting items in this announcement that I just wanted to mention real quick. One is that the entire Gemini 2.0 lineup is using a new reinforcement learning technique where Gemini itself will critique its own responses. The idea here is that this should lead to more accurate feedback loops and ultimately an improved ability to handle more sensitive or nuanced prompts. Another big focus across Gemini 2.0 is multimodality, of course. All of the Gemini 2.0 models released so far feature multimodal input with text output. But according to Google's blog post, it sounds like we can expect even more multimodalities to become available in the coming months. They mentioned image generation and text-to-speech for Gemini 2.0 Flash specifically, and the multimodal live API is also expected to hit general availability soon. And lastly, safety and security are clearly a major priority for Gemini 2.0. Google is leveraging something called automated red teaming to assess potential safety and security 
security risks, including those from what's called indirect prompt injection. For those unfamiliar, that's a type of cybersecurity attack where bad actors try to hide malicious instructions within data that an AI system might retrieve, so it's good to see Google's taking these security aspects very seriously. And that, my friends, is pretty much everything you need to know about the latest Gemini 2.0 updates. Definitely quite a few changes here, and it sounds really interesting, especially that thinking experimental model. It's genuinely fun to play around with, and I highly encourage you to try it out for yourself if you haven't already. With that said, I'm really curious to hear what you guys think of these new Gemini updates, so please let me know in the comments section down below. In the meantime, I'm getting out of here, but before I do, huge shout out to our channel members on screen right now. Simply put, we greatly appreciate you guys as Damien and I work super hard to make the best Android content on the platform, and your support means so much to us. Until next time, this has been Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.